This talk is an overview of the diagnosis of neurodevelopmental disorders. This talk will review the diagnoses in the DSM chapter titled Neurodevelopmental Disorders, with visual organizers and mnemonics to help you remember the criteria. Specifically, we'll review intellectual developmental disorder, global developmental delay, and the specific developmental disorders. Before we begin, I want to point out that since these are developmental disorders, they all have onset during early development, which generally refers to the first five years of life. Let's start with intellectual developmental disorder. IDD, previously known as intellectual disability, involves deficits in intellectual and adaptive function in the areas of conceptual, social, and practical skills. To make this more concrete, here are some examples of these skills. The conceptual area includes reading, writing, and mathematics. The social area includes speaking, communicating, and socializing. And the practical area includes basic and instrumental ADLs. Basic and instrumental ADLs can be remembered with the mnemonics wet the bed and depend, as shown here. Basic ADLs are basic self-care tasks, while instrumental ADLs are more advanced tasks required to maintain an independent home. Basic ADLs can be remembered with the mnemonic wet the bed, walking and transferring, elimination or urinary and fecal continence, toileting and grooming, bathing, eating, and dressing. Instrumental ADLs can be remembered with the mnemonic depend. Dollars, which refers to managing finances and shopping. Environment, which refers to cleaning and performing maintenance on a home as well as doing laundry. Being able to use a phone or communicating through other means. Eating, which in this case refers to cooking meals. Nursing, which refers to managing one's health care and taking medications and driving or managing other means of transport. Let's move on to global developmental delay. GDD simply involves failure to meet developmental milestones in multiple different areas of development. The main areas of development include gross motor, fine motor, social, and language. Here are examples of skills in each of these developmental areas. GDD is generally used as a placeholder diagnosis for patients less than five years old who are unable to participate in formal testing for developmental milestones. Once testing can be performed, then diagnoses of specific developmental delays can be used instead. Let's move on to what I call the specific developmental disorders. These can be divided into speech disorders, motor disorders, and learning disorders. Speech disorders involve difficulties with different aspects of speech and language. Language disorder involves difficulty acquiring and using language. Speech sound disorder involves difficulty with producing specific speech sounds, such as lisping or mispronouncing certain syllables. Fluency disorder involves difficulty with fluency and time patterning of speech. Stuttering is an obvious example. And social communication disorder, also known as pragmatic communication disorder, which involves specific problems with using both verbal and nonverbal social communication. Motor disorders include the aptly named developmental coordination disorder, which involves difficulty with coordinated motor movements. For example, clumsiness, such as dropping or bumping into things, or inaccuracy, such as difficulties writing or playing sports. It also includes stereotypic movement disorder, which involves repetitive and purposeless motor behaviors, such as hand waving, body rocking, head banging, or hitting oneself. Finally, specific learning disorder involves learning and using academic skills below the level expected for the patient's age. This can be specified as problems with reading, writing, or mathematics. These are the main disorders I wanted to cover in this talk, but there are three other categories of neurodevelopmental disorders which I cover in other talks. Autism spectrum disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and tic disorders. That's the end of this talk. I hope this is a useful guide to these disorders. Thank you.